All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about my five favorite or at least top neck knives in rotation. And we're gonna have a few runner ups here that are pretty cool too. But I thought it'd be worth talking about these guys because they are pretty awesome. And I don't always run um, neck knives, but sometimes neck knives are very handy as either a companion or complementary knife, or sometimes in particular applications, primarily bushcrafting, when you're running either a you know hatchet or an ax, you know, a folding saw. It's some other complementary or tertiary uh, tools, this is a, a neck knife makes a lot of sense, especially with something like a robust or you know a medium sized neck knife or larger size neck knife. Um, running tertiary tools makes a lot of sense when plugging in neck knives. So first off, we're gonna go from smallest to largest. There are some serious budget options here as well. So once again, I try to make most of my lists very um, inclusive to whatever budget you're at. There are very expensive knives here. There are very cheap knives knives here. So anyways, all of them perform well and all of them are good. So first one up is going to be the Mora Eldris. This is a tiny little guy and I think a lot of people don't give enough credit to the little Mora Eldris because it does have invariably a like two inch blade, but there is a lot of work that you can be that can be done with a Mora Eldris. Now granted, are you going to be batoning with this? Not really, but it is going to be a very tough, very admirable carving specific knife. And that was how the Mora Eldris was originally posed. It was designed to be a companion knife. It was designed to be a very compact, very small carving knife. And for that use and application, it does a very good job. As I've said in previous reviews and videos, one of my favorite things about the Eldris is that you have this very compact blade, but it's still a near full handle that you can really get your hand wrapped around and not only get your hand wrapped around, but it's also chunky. This is where a lot of neck knives kind of can fall apart. All of mine are pretty good in this regard, but you know, you get into neck knives that have just super, super thin handles and they end up prioritizing compactness or carryability as opposed to the actual usability of the tool. So that's what I really like about the Eldris. It doesn't sacrifice on a lot, but still gives you a very compact, really good whittling edge. Now, next one up is going to be a prototype Bark River Knives Rising Wolf. Now, this one was not made particularly in large quantities, but I still love it. And once again, there are some runner ups here that are more attainable but the rising wolf for me what i think it really epitomizes and there are several other bark rivers that are similar to the rising wolf um, and that is that once again similar to what we see on the eldris you have a reasonably compact blade so you guys can see here just barely just barely doesn't actually come across my um palm but it is a really long handle so you have a nice long full handle that you can get a good grip on and what i kind of actually like about this knife for a usable bushcrafting um, field blade is that because part of your handle is part of your blade if you do need to do some light batoning this does have that extra added space so you're still dealing with about three and a half to three and three quarters of a batonable surface so once again you're not going to be felling a giant redwood tree with this but this is going to allow you to have a little bit of extra room if you're trying to carve on something you're trying to make something like a netting needle you can do some light batoning with this knife and once again you're not having to sacrifice much in the way of a handle and you're still dealing with a good reasonable thickness on your grip so i like it I like personally for me when I look for a really good bushcrafting um, neck knife, things that I look for is a nice usable handle and a more compact blade. Um, so that's where some things like the Rising Wolf, the Eldris really do well. Next one up is going to be the more robust. Now this is the most recent or modern version of the robust. It has gone through a few facelifts, but I think the robust really sits there in champions as a budget sub $20 knife. I think that this is just about as good as it gets. And honestly, as I've had people in the comment section below say, this is the type of knife that you can get into. Once again, pair it with a good ax, pair it with a good hatchet, pair it with a good folding saw, and you're going to have a really solid tool that you really don't need to replace. You don't have to go to these more expensive options. The Robust is very solid. Now, once again, you're dealing with about an eighth of an inch thick uh, blade stock on this, so a chonky little boy, but it is still a really solid blade. And uh, once again, that additional thickness is going to give you a little bit more robust um, blade, so you won't have to deal with it too many issues. Also, it's made out of 1095, so you get decent edge retention on it. And uh, yeah, so I have no real complaints with it. Once again, as we see, compact blade, really full-sized handle. You can comfortably get your hand on there, really positive forward finger um, kind of 
stop there um, or hand guard, finger guard I should say, and you're dealing with a lot of rubberizing. I love the rubberizing on this handle. I think it really adds to the traction. And unlike um, every knife here except for the Eldris, you are dealing with a fully rubberized handle. So if you are working in colder climates, it is going to be a more comfortable handle. And with like most Moras, you really don't have to sacrifice much in regards to durability. All right, next one up and stepping up slightly in size, we have the Winkler Knives Blue Ridge Hunter. Now, Winkler is not my favorite knife company in the world, but I still have a Winkler, still roll it into the rotation, so it's not like I totally just hate this knife, but it's just not one of my top favorites. But once again, this leans into a little bit more of your larger end of neck knives and once again, similar to the previously mentioned ones and similarly, similar to the Rising Wolf, part of your handle is also the blade. So that gives you that little bit of extra batoning room should you need it, should you want it, it is there. In addition, you also have a very large handle that is not my favorite style. And I think the biggest knock that I have against this, as we've mentioned earlier, is that I like a knife handle for neck knives that is not only you know long, this does meet the long requirement, but this is a little bit on the thinner side. So you guys can see here in comparison to what I'm talking about, this is the Winkler um, on this side, and then you got the Mora Robust over here. So you can see the Robust is substantially thicker. And so that's where, you know, I'm not the largest fan of this particular handle. So it's still decent, still fine, totally workable, not a huge issue, but that's kind of what I get at. Okay, last one up and probably my favorite, but also the conversely largest. And when I mean the largest, this is not like terribly larger, you know, maybe a quarter to a half inch larger than the last knife talked about. Um, this is the course the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter in CPM 3V. Now this one for me, like I said, really checks off all those boxes because once again, you have a nice full handle full thickness and it is a reasonably compact blade and still very carryable on the neck. So this is for me probably peak neck knife right here. Now, once again, the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter is not the cheapest. It's also not the most expensive. The Winkler is the most expensive and uh, the Rising Wolf is not too far behind the Bushcrafter, but it's for what I, in my opinion, feel like is for a decent price, you get a really solid knife. Um, so yeah, once again, it meets all my needs and what I look for in a bushcrafting knife, but these all within reason function just fine. So I would be okay with any of these, honestly, as a neck knife, obviously I carry them, so I'm fine with them as neck knives, but in all seriousness, um, this is my selection, this is my top five in my collection of neck knives. Do I have other things that I can neck knife carry? Sure. Um, the other honorable mentions before we end the video are going to be the Demco Knives Arminger 4. Once again, we're dealing with a reasonably compact blade, slightly smaller than the Bushcrafter, but what we're dealing with, what I like, once again, compact blade, reasonably full-sized handle, and then, um, and then we're dealing with a rubberized handle. So good traction, and I really do prioritize my rubberized handles. As much as people don't like them, truly wait until you're out in the cold. The micarta, wood, you know, um, G10 handles get so cold so quickly. These rubberized handles do not get cold, and so they are very nice in that regard. So this one's a runner-up, the Demco for Arminger 4, of course, with the clip point. And then another one that I think is an honorable mention, especially because I know my guys like their full tang blades, even if I don't always personally believe in it. We have the BPS knives. This one it doesn't really have an official name. I'll probably link it in the com or in the description below. Um, um, but this is essentially a ripoff, BPS's ripoff of the Mora Knives Clipper slash Companion because it is very similar in almost all regards. The only things that are nicer about this is of course, once again, you're dealing with that full tang um, blade and then you're also dealing with a thicker blade. So full tang and thicker than a Mora Companion. Um, but aside from that, um, you're pretty much dealing with the same knife. It also doesn't have the unfinished um, spine on this, so you can strike ferro rods with it. So there is that advantage as well. But some disadvantages of this over the Moras is that this is in 1066 high carbon. So what that means is there's less carbon content in this blade. So conversely, you're not gonna get as 
good in edge retention with this, so you will have to sharpen it more. But realistically speaking, if you're wanting it for the additional or extra toughness that the full tang offers, then it's something that you just have to be okay with the sacrifice. But what's nice about the BPS is that it is very similarly priced, about the same amount of money as a companion. So you're getting a good price on it, so that definitely helps out. Anyways, guys, that has been the two runner-ups plus the top five. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Hopefully you've learned something. Definitely let me know what your go-to um, neck knife is. I think this is something that there's a lot of variation. Some people like even bigger knives than what I've mentioned. I've tried to keep it under nine inches in overall length for all of these knives, but let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you run. Um, yeah, I'm definitely curious about it. But anyways, guys, as always, hopefully Hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.